Good morning, good morning. Hello everybody. It's bouncing with birds. I am here. I don't know if you guys can hear me. I'm using a slightly different setup this morning. <laughs> How is everybody doing? We'll see stuff over this way. I'm waiting for my iPhone to finish updating today. I got an update notice for my streaming app that said, you're going to be stuttering. Your audio is going to be stuttering if you continue using this uh, outdated app on your phone. So I had to update my phone, and I'm waiting, 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 waiting for it to go. And it's like taking a while. So I thought, you know what? Let me just pop it up on the, on the what's it called? laptop use this old busted up it looks all grainy it looks like a thing it looks like a filter anyhow good morning everybody welcome to the real juicy detox pop in say hello say hello in the comments so that i can bring your comments up on the screen as we get bouncing i love these morning bounce classes i'm telling you when i didn't do it yesterday I didn't feel like my my day was normal, you know? <sighs> How's everybody doing today? Are you getting your bounce on? Are you? That's good. Even if you don't want to feel like doing it. If you're up, just get up. Just get it done. You'll feel better for it. And you will feel like, oh, that wasn't nearly so bad. Now was it? <sighs> Bouncing gets your lymphatic system, and by the way, in case, you, in case you're new and you're like, what is she doing? I'm bouncing on my rebounder. There it is. Bouncing on my rebounder. I'm on my, my laptop camera. I know it looks a little weird. <laughs> the quality looks like, oh my God, did she film this in 1975? No, she didn't. She's live and live streaming this in 2021. I'm going old school. I'm going back to bad video quality. Oh well, suck it. <laughs> Burns. We are bouncing and my mind is on Christmas, y'all. It is almost Christmas. We are 10 days away from Christmas, right? What day is it today? The 15th. In 10 days, we celebrate Christmas with our families or maybe not. But a lot of people who are watching do, right? Do you celebrate Christmas? Let me know in the comments. Drop your favorite Christmas emoji and say, I love Christmas. If you celebrate Christmas. Good morning, Karen. Good morning, good morning. Software up, uh, install now. What do you mean install now? I thought I was installing it. Verifying update. Oh, seriously, technology. So yes, drop a comment and I'll pull up your comment just like Karen's. Hi, Karen. How's your morning going? How's Demetra doing this week? I hope you girls are having a good start to your week. Good morning, Jennifer. Jennifer's in the house as well. Jennifer's in the house. I got nine of you in my house this morning. What? It's a party. Good morning, Gwen. Did you say, did you post day 15? I did. I did post day 15. If you're looking for it on, um, on YouTube only, sometimes it doesn't show up on YouTube on my phone for a whole day. Hello, beautiful Jennifer. So you might want to check the posts I put in, uh, in the YouTube group. Yeah, I'm really glad I, I came on the laptop to start this because that update is still going on. Do you guys like my t-shirt? I'm on the A team. Get it? In Canada, we say A a lot. A? I catch myself doing it a lot. I got this, oh my gosh, for Canada Day a few years ago. I'm on the A team. I just found it in my cupboard. I'm like, what's this doing here? Okay, I can wear that. Yeah. Thank you for always asking about mom. Oh my gosh, you're welcome, babe. She's one of us. She's, she's one of the gang here. 
I'm so happy. She's doing great. She's a nut. <laughs> I'm blessed for her. She's a 94 year old nut. That's awesome. Bouncing soon, babe. Awesome, Amy. So if you guys um, are new to this and are new to me, what we do here is we bounce oh for about between 15 minutes and 15 to 30 minutes. <laughs> yo, yo, ladies. Jennifer is bountiful and free in the house. Oh my goodness, Dot, you're hilarious. You guys, check, check this out. Look at Dot. Hey, what are you doing down there? Hey, hey, what are you doing? No, she's gone under it. Shit. Come on, Dot. I can't bounce if you're under it. Dottie. Can you please get up from under there? Get it out, you silly girl. It's not a place for, for kittens to play. Yeah, go sit under the tree. <laughs> go sit under the tree. Yeah, so we bounce, we get our lymphatic system flowing. I will switch over to the other camera as soon as it's finished updating. So thank you for bearing with me. I'm done my bouncing. Awesome, babe. I love yoga with Andrew from Refuel Yoga, feeling mellow and quite gentle with myself. Oh, baby, gentle, like an easy Sunday summer, an easy, what is that? What is that Lionel Richie song? Easy like a something morning. We are bouncing, we are gently getting ourselves moving. Now I'm doing a little bit more. I'm kind of doing a toe tap. Let me see if I can show you guys this. Yes, I'm doing a toe tap. Let me show you. I'm doing a little toe tap out in front. So I tap, I come back here, I tap again, I come back here, I tap again. And you can do this like this. You don't have to do a bounce. But I like this because it gives my quads a little bit of definition. To tell you the truth, I was doing this the other day naked <laughs> on the trampoline. I passed by it on my way down from the shower. Nobody else was home. Whipped off my robe and started doing a little bouncing. <laughs> and I noticed when I was doing this front and back, toe tap, toe tap to the front. Oh my goodness, I was seeing all kinds of fun definition in my quadriceps mus uh, muscles right here. So I started to do that a little bit. And I will say though, it's a bit more of an intense workout. And if you're not up for that, easy like a Sunday morning, thank you. Thank you, I knew it was something. I thought that was what it was. Uh, hi, bouncy birds, hi, Elaine. Oh my God, I love your picture, Elaine. You look super cute with your hair straightened, girl. Good morning, my juicy families. Did anyone see the meditation for day 15? It's on, it's, I just did it, but I did it through my uh, YouTube app, but I did, it's in the uh, Facebook group. <sighs> Cleaning out my fridge while, whilst listening. She is so cute, isn't she? Dottie. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean, Dottie, Dottie. Yes. <laughs> so if you don't want to do that higher intensity, you can just do a, Front tap, tap here, like this. When I first started doing this rebounding, you can go just like this. When I first started doing rebounding, oh my God, like some of you, first time you get the rebounder, you're like, oh my God, no, like I can't even do a minute on that. What the hell? I didn't think I was so, you know, I had no idea I was that out of shape. But here's what I think it is. I don't think it's because you're out of shape. I just think it's because it really opens up your energy centers. And when your energy centers, your blood flow, your nerve flow, and your lymphatic system flow all kind of open up and wake up, and we're not used to waking up those three energy flows like this, it can kind of sometimes feel like exhaustion, I think. That's my best guess. I don't know. I'm just making shit up as I go, but not always just on this point. I 
rarely just make shit up on my own as I go, trust me. But this is one of my 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 wonderings, my musings. I wonder if that is what is what is if that is what is happening. Is it's not that it's hard, it's that your your respiration, your breathing changes as you're opening up your lymphatic system, as you're opening up your heart and your blood flow, as you're opening up opening up your your, your neurons, your neurological flow, your nerve flow. So I think that combination of all three together, when you first start out on a rebounder, can sometimes feel a little bit, you know, a little bit like, whoo, that's a lot. So that's why I recommend if you are just starting out, just do your feet, just put your feet, don't take your feet all the way off of the trampoline. You can see that here. Right, where the ball of my feet, the ball of my feet are keeping contact with the trampoline. Or you can do, you can kind of start doing a little toe tap. Like a, you, you jump and you tap your foot here, and then you jump and you tap your foot here. Again, you can do this without bringing your feet up. You know, like if you're at a party and you're just like, yeah, man, I'm grooving, this is good tunes, mm hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not like you're on the dance floor going, yeah, yeah, this is such a great song, oh my god. In turn, that when you have carnival, you know, you can be chipping down the road, right? And then when your favorite tune comes on on the big truck and you're all jumping in the road behind it in costume or not, then you start really jumping up, jump up, right? And then in between songs, you take a little pause. You take a little chip, 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 right? Anybody ever jump up for Carnival or Caravana where they live? Right, this is how you move down the road. Right, you can even do this. Any kind of bounce, any kind of up and down motion so that your lymphatic vessels get a chance to open up their flaps to let in that lymphatic system, lymphatic waste. What's going on here? Okay, we can go now. Oh, that's all right. Oh, that's all right. I'm going to need my phone. This is working out just fine. Grainy and all. I love it. <laughs> Good morning, Cindy. How is Cindy doing today? I hope you are well, my love. It's so easy on your body. I lost my balance on black ice the other day. Oh, baby, I'm so sorry. And it hurts pretty bad, but not on the rebounder. That is great. Hey, hey, Tiffany, how you doing, baby? So great to see you here. It's the first time I've seen you in class. Your smiling face. Look at you, how cute. Good morning, my love. How are you doing? Are you on your rebounder? Are you just watching from bed? Are you on your way to work? Is it dinner time? Where are you watching from? So many questions, Tiffany. I got so many questions, babe. I'm so glad you're here. Can't wait to get to know you more. Yes. What a great community we have, eh? See, eh? What a great community we have, eh? It's what we do in Canada. And we say, eh? Hey. <laughs> ah, I love you guys. Thank you so much for loving me. <laughs> through all of the stuff that we do here together. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I just want to check one quick thing over here. Make sure everything is going okay on the uh, on the YouTube side of things. You guys know that I got monetized, right? I got monetized, which means that you might see ads on your on your um, on your videos now. And don't be mad at that, all right? Girl's got to make her coin. Girl, girl's got to get her coin, y'all. And I'm certainly not going to ask for you to give me your coin. I just want to add all the free value I can add. I can possibly add in a day. And I will do the, uh, I will make the big bucks through passive income, through, uh, through ads on the videos. That is called being monetized. So... Um, let me just click out of a couple things here. I got all kinds of things coming up. Oh, you're Tucker Tucker. Awesome. Okay. Okay, baby. Awesome. You're Tucker. I was wondering, I'm Tucker Tucker from YouTube and I'm at work. All right, babe. So good to have you. Good morning, Kristen. Just got done bouncing now to make juice. Woohoo! So happy for you. Thank you, babe. 
I'm so happy for me as well. You know, being monetized on YouTube is like a big deal. So one of the things I wanted to talk about, as per, dog is going crazy on the couch back there, as per <laughs> Christmas and eating and holidays, listen, that's a real thing, right? That's a real deal. We get ready for holidays, for Christmas with our families, and a lot of people are like, oh my God, what am I going to eat? Like, you know, the, the family, the usual family fare is like, it's all acid. It's all cooked and it's all acid. What do I do? And my best solution for that is bring your food. Con contribute to the family offering. Hey, I can't wait for Christmas dinner. What can I bring? Can I bring a salad? Can I bring an entree? Can I bring a side dish? Can I bring a dessert? Can I bring all of those things? I've got some amazing new uh, recipes that I've been perfecting, like my Burnsy burgers, like my Trinidad in pastels, if you want to make those, like my, you know, fill in the blank. All the stuff we've been making in the Real Juicy Detox has been pretty phenomenal, right? So you can make up a bunch of, you know, you have time. You've got 10 days until Christmas, 10 days to perfect and to get some really great recipes going in the kitchen. We've covered quite a few. You've got tons of dips, salad dressings. We're going to be making some more of those. We are going to be making some more of those. Maybe today, maybe tomorrow, but definitely within the next 10 days, we are going to be getting on that. Yes, we are. I wonder if I can send this invite over to my phone so I can have a little bit better phone quality. Hang on, just let me get this tech part sorted out. Yes, are you guys um, are you guys going to be getting together with your family? Are you going to be hosting Christmas this year? How is that going to go? What are your plans? Let me know, let me know. Do you need any help figuring this whole uh, food thing out? That's what we're here for. That is what we are doing. So now I'm going to come over to my phone over here, already set up on the tripod, and I'm going to go and get into this broadcast studio because as cool and as gritty as the, you know, the noise in the in the background of this video is, noise meaning the, the visual noise, the kind of grainy kind of situation going on here, as cool as that is, <laughs> I'm not really digging it. I want to have my usual quality. So we are going to, I need to turn on, hang on. So many different things. Tech is so much fun. I love all the tech stuff, you guys, figuring out, out all this stuff. I need to put my headphones on. Okay, are those connected? I'm gonna assume they're connected. If they're not connected, we will hear a huge ass, um, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, feedback. Hey, Mandy, how are you, babe? How are you? Oh my God, I'm so glad that you are here, Mandy girl. I'm so glad that you are here with us today. Okay, I'm gonna switch over to this camera. Uh, let's see, let's see. Oh, two Burnses, two Burnsies. Two Burnsies, two loves. See, look at the difference. This is on my, this one over here is my iPhone camera. And this one over here is my um, my laptop camera. So I'm just gonna do this little switch. Pardon for the, you know, pardon me for the, for the slight, you know, interruption as it were, but I am a one woman show up in here, my darling. I am a one woman show up in here. So we're just doing the best that we can. So we are bouncing. There we go, Mandy, I love you. I love you. How are you doing? You are rocking your, your juice cleanse and I could not be more proud of you. Holy crap. 
Holy crap, you are amazing. Amazing. Anybody who is doing this juicing journey for as many days as you are doing it, or you're doing a real juicy, amazing um, detox diet where you're eating, chewing food, which is, by the way, what we're going to be covering in hopefully today's masterclass. If I can get all the notes done in time for noon, we are going to be doing this. It might even come tomorrow. There's a whole two other sections that I want to add to this. Why we don't eat beans and why we don't eat soy. And I don't know if I can get all of those things. And I have to do up the whole entire list of acid and alkaline food for you on one of my cards. And my cards, gosh, can I get one of those cards up here for you guys? Ah. Uh, where did I post it? I, I don't know where it is. I'll show you the rough draft of the of the recipe card if you're just popping in here and want to see it. Uh, check this out. This is one of the recipe cards. This is what we're going to be talking about today. How to take, you know, the Dr. Morris eat fruits and melons or eat veggies or steamed veggies or fruits and melons or, you know, and drink juice in between. This is hopefully going to be way more helpful for you guys than just any other thing that you've ever seen as a tool for this. So I'm hoping to get all of those notes and all of those cards done in time for today's class at noon, but I may not get it done in time for noon. And I want this to be one of those uh, iconic classes that you can always refer to that I can send to my clients or potential clients who want to do a detox journey with me as a certified detox specialist, which I am, I'm certified with Dr. Robert Morris at his International School of Detoxification this year. If you want to have me as your detox coach, right? One of the things that I do is I go through and I cover all of these points in our sessions. I help you guys figure out what to eat, when to eat it, how to eat, all of that kind of stuff. So I'm uh, putting together a master class for you guys with all kinds of whiteboards. So very similar to the whiteboards that we did for our other classes. I'll show you that here, right? Very similar to these whiteboards right here, for example, that were really, really helpful for so many people in the class. So I'm gonna be doing those up. Um, and yeah, I just, I want it to be really good. Uh, Don says, girl, my hubs and I are doing Christmas morning with the family, food temptation doesn't start for us until evening, so we will be home by then and in control. Okay, good, Dawn, that is good to know. Yeah, all the family favorites, all the food, it can be challenging, right? So what I would recommend, I love you too, Mandy, and you're so welcome, babe. What I would recommend is before you go out that night, when the temptation for the evening stuff starts, make sure to have stuff ready to go. Get your, get your Trini pastels ready, get whatever, get your, your stuffings ready, I also have, I also have coconut meat in the fridge, in the freezer actually, but I have some in the fridge that need slicing out, like scooping out. I would, I would start trying some different recipes that kind of mimic the kind of foods that you used to enjoy. I know that, oh, I'm thirsty. Let me take a sip. Um, I'm drinking pineapple juice, by the way. I always start my day with a liter of juice, my favorite juice. Today it's pineapple. Mm. I'm starting to feel my, my sweating coming on. I'm starting to feel that glisten. Feels great. Feels great. Hey, doggy. Are you watching when we jump? Are you watching when we bounce? <laughs> She's been sitting there the whole time. Okay. So yeah, have some of those Christmas favorites prepped and ready to go. So that when you get back in the evening from your family get together, you have lots of healthy alkaline based treats. You can make those peanut butter cookies. Oh my God, you guys. <sighs> the peanut butter cookies. The peanut butter cookies. Now peanuts are are a little bit, they say, on the acid side, but you're having a small hit of that. It's not like you're having meat and rice and potatoes and stuffing and sweet potato yams and uh, uh, sweet, you know, marshmallows on top of it and pumpkin pie. That is like 
acid, 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 bam, 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 right? You can also make the, maybe we should make some cashew, some cashew butter, and then make cashew cookies, cashew butter cookies, ooh, baby. You can also buy cashew butter in the grocery store. You can make an uh, almond butter. You can use alkaline nuts, right? You can use alkaline nuts so that you're not compromising your health at all. Whew. On one of the midday classes the other day, you were asking about if you're eating mainly alkaline, small amounts of acid foods now and then are okay. Then, you, then your example was that you sometimes eat chickpeas and olives. How come olives are acid? Aren't they, they're fruit, aren't they? Yes, but when they are pickled, they fall into then the acid side of chemistry. Yes, yes. Olives, fresh olives are not, they're alkaline and pickled olives are on the acid side. But remember, we're not eating, look at the quantity of, of food that you're eating and look at how much of it is acid and what acid. There are some non-negotiables in my life. My non-negotiables are dairy, that's non-negotiable, that's not coming in anymore. My non-negotiables are meat, that's not coming in any, anymore. Beans, nope. Eggs, nope. Flour, nope, right? No dairy, no baked goods, no refined processed sugar. Um, my, uh, my allowances, what I will allow into my, into my diet are things like pickles or olives. Those I'm gonna allow in. Maple syrup, even though it is cooked in order to get the maple sap into maple syrup, it's pure maple syrup. I'm not having, you know, syrup that's flavored like maple. No, 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 no. I live in Canada, eh? I live in Canada. We have pure Canadian maple syrup up here in abundance in spades. So um, maple syrup is one of the things that I will allow in. Sugar, non-negotiable. Unless it's in a small amount, like in a bottle of Ivar. Then I'm going to, you know, until I start making my own Ivar, then I'll be like, all right, I'll let that in. That's a small allowance. But overall, corn flour, I'm getting my hands on some organic corn flour so that it is not inflammatory to the body. That is going to be an allowance that I'm going to let in. Corn is generally not very digestible in the body, right? We want to be careful with having too much corn flour. I allow it into my diet. But I'm going to be honest with you, when I do, I am more gassy. I'm not going to lie. I can, I can tell in my body. But there are some times when I'm going to want a little bit of a treat, and you can't really replicate corn with other, uh, for other stuff. You know what I'm saying? So as long as you have it, if you can get your hands on non-GMO organic corn, that's actually not inflammatory to the body, and I'm going to be ordering some of that. Uh, probably later on this week. So there are different things that you can do. You got to be smart about your your food intake. You have to just be aware of why we're eating this way, right? We're keeping out the acid because the acid is what has caused everything in our body to go wrong. It's what has caused the deterioration of our cells. It's what causes an, an ultimately cancer because it kills the cells. What does acid do when you put some acid you drop some battery acid on your hand, you're going to know that baby's going to burn. And it is not the burns and the good kind of burn. It is going to burn and eat away at your, at your skin. It's going to kill and damage your skin over time. And initially, the body has a pretty good shot at, at neutralizing the acid that we are bringing into our body because it goes into the inflammation buffering effect. It goes into the cholesterol buffering effect, and it goes into the calcium buffering effect. Three ways that our body is on it. Our body is on the task of keeping us alive in spite of the crap that we put into it, in spite of all of that. So when we keep putting in all the acid, though, and we start putting on all the acid perfumes and, and toxic dyes and toxic chemicals on our skin, in our makeup, Perfumes, oh my God, Rookie, she's just all about the perfume. Everything has to be scented and everything so perfumed up. And 
the body is like struggling under all of that. It's toxic. It's trying to get it out. That's why she has, one of the reasons why she has so much acne. And I'm trying to like convince her. It's like, Brooke, I know that you love it. I used to love it too. I wouldn't go anywhere without ch -ch -ch angel perfume. You know what I'm saying? But when we do that, and after a while, look, Brookie's only 18 and already lots of uh, acidosis trying to get out of the skin because the kidneys are shut down because of all the damaging proteins and dairy and toxins that we put in the body. And then it can't excrete through the kidneys because they're shut down, <laughs> right? That's where we get rid of our metabolic waste. Are you ready to go out, Dottie? Okay. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Right? So that's where we get rid of our metabolic waste is through our kidneys, that waste that's left behind after our food metabolizes or breaks down, right? The more we put in this acid food into our bodies, and we're going to talk about that in the, in the master class that I'm working on for you guys, Detox 102, what to eat when you're detoxing, um, what and how to eat when you're detoxing. Um, we talk about this. How do you know if a food is acid or alkaline? Well, I'll give you the quickie here, right? Because I know some of you may not be able to catch that class because you're going to be in bed, in bed, right, Mandy? But what happens is they take food and they burn it into an ash. They burn it right down so that that replicates and mimics the digestive process in the body. And then they dilute that. They make a solution. The ash, 100 milliliters to 1 liter they mix that together to form a solution, and then they test the potential for hydrogen or the pH level of the acidity of that solution. There are only two main foods that are tested as alkaline on the planet. They are fruits and they are vegetables. Nuts and seeds as well, but fruits, top of the line, top of the line, top of the line, even more alkaline in scale than compared to vegetables. So they're the most alkalizing in the body. And when you have an acid hit going into your body constantly, and it's piled up in there, you guys, it's stored up in the body because your kidneys are shut down. Oftentimes your GI tract is shut down, right? Lots of interstitial stagnation, interstitial cystitis. Anytime you hear itis, it is inflammation, right? When you keep putting that chemistry in your body, after a while, your cell, your body can't inflame itself enough to keep that under control. Your and that's where weight gain comes in. That's where we see people get, you know, their weight keeps going up and up and up every year, 10 pounds every year, every year, every year. And it's a big struggle. And we think, oh, I got to get on the, I got to get to the gym. I got to get on the, the stationary bike. I got to get on the, the Stairmaster. I got to get this weight off. And yeah, you will. You will burn the weight off, but I did that, guys, and the cancer still came back. Why? Because I wasn't taking care of the problem from the cause. I was pouring battery acid down my throat, in my arm, with all the CT scans I was getting, all the chemical treatment, with all the chemotherapy drugs they were giving me, right? All of that shit, all of it, all the pharmaceutical medication, all the pain medication I've taken throughout my 40-year history with an addiction to pain medication, all of that shit. All of that is gone now, by the way. But all of that, it adds up in your body until you can't inflame it enough. You can't pull enough, you can't uh, dump enough cholesterol into your blood to handle, and, and into your lymphatic system to handle that acid hit. You can't leach enough calcium out of your bones in order to cool down the, the, the acid. What do we usually take when we get when we get uh, stomach acid heartburn, we take Tums because it's calcium. Well, the body, the largest mineral within the body is calcium. That's right, because of our skeletal system. So the body is gonna go, holy shit, that inflammation, that's not helping. That cholesterol dumping, that's not happening. And don't worry, don't, don't listen to your doctor. Oh, your cholesterol is fine. Bullshit, they don't know what they're talking about. If you are having such an acid hit in your body, you better believe that your calcium, that your cholesterol is up. Oh, hell yeah. A lot of ways to tell. You can look at your eyes. Look at my brown eyes. I don't know if you can see it in this light, but my brown eyes. Oh, I have a picture of it. 
I have a picture of my eyes and you can see the cholesterol ring around my eyes. Where is Burns's eyes? Are these my eyes? I can't see. Burns, yeah. You see the, 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 the eye, my right eye? You see how it's got that really predominant blue, hazy tape? It looks like, it's like, looks like there's um, cellophane, like gift wrapping tape around the outside. See that blue ring, right? And my right side of my body is more lymphatically compromised. I know this because all of my symptoms are usually on the right-hand side. All of my problematic symptoms, my right leg is bigger. My right, right leg has more cellulite. My right breast was bigger. Before I had breast augmentation surgery, it was really saggy. And uh, I, my right side is compromised, right? Well, that's cholesterol placking. When you see that in, a, in, a, in your eye, that's cholesterol placking. I got the same thing going on, that haze around the left eye. You can see that there. Also cholesterol plaquing. I got lots of nerve rings going on. I got a lot of shit going on. I got lots of shit going on. And I'm working my ass off to clear all of that up. Because um, and that, the eyes do change, but they do take a while to change, right? But that cholesterol plaquing is because all the acid that I've been eating and my body is like, holy shit, this, this shit is going to burn up. This body is going to die on us. We need to get this cool down. And lipids, fats are more... Uh, viscous and can handle the, the acid hit much more effectively than inflammation. The body's going to rush in with inflammation anytime there's injury anywhere. So you get a you get a scratch on your arm. You notice. Well, let's do it right now. If I have a scratch on my arm, you're going to notice in a little while that is going to start to get red and inflamed. And if you scratch it hard enough, it's going to it's going to have a a a, a redness to it. Right? It's going to welt up a little bit if you scratch it hard enough. When I had euticaria when I was a teenager, that is where you have a huge uh, rash all over your body, and you can itch it here. And as you scratch it, it just welts up immediately, and it just spreads. Right, You scratch it here, and then suddenly it's like traveling. It's like traveling all the way down your arm. So when we take in all of this acid food... And how do you know what's acid or not? Come to class today because it's going to be in there. If you can't come live and in person, and hopefully I'll get it up today. I'm not making any promises. I'm not putting any stress on myself. If it's not today, it will be tomorrow. But it's going to be amazing when it drops, when I drop this information for you guys. But either way, you're going to see and have these really cool slides that you can have on your phone. You can screenshot them on, their, on your phone and you can carry these around with you so that you can study it when you're at the grocery store. Oh yeah, what is, until you get really proficient at it, what, what, what can I have? What, should I, what shouldn't I have? Not because somebody arbitrarily tells you, oh, don't eat this or don't eat that and you don't understand why. You're going to understand, oh, I'm not eating acid food. I'm only letting in alkaline food, alkalizing food, food that is going to heal my body, food that is going to turn around the cause of why I'm experiencing what I'm experiencing, this dis-ease in my body. This is so, so important. Um, do, the, in the Dr. Morris video I shared to the group tonight, he even said, though quinoa is alkaline, it's a complex sugar, so not what is designed for our bodies. Is buckwheat the same? Well, there are, it is, it is starchy, is, is, the, the issue with quinoa and buckwheat. But when we are looking at replacing, listen, this is a lifestyle that we're talking about here, you guys. When we are looking at replacing baked goods, um, uh, uh, flour, bread, and so on, we need to look at alkaline stuff. Buckwheat is a fruit seed. It is alkaline, all right? Uh, quinoa is alkaline as well. It is more complex chemistry, so I would not have it every single day. But these are one; these are some of the things where you have to start saying, okay, let me weigh the pros and the cons. Let me keep my diet as clean as possible. I don't eat buckwheat uh, pizza every day, but you could if you wanted to. If it's not bothering you, listen to how it's affecting your body. Listen to how your body is responding to it. Some people can't eat um, a lot of things that are alkaline because... They have messed up their digestive system so much that their uh, digestive enzymes are still playing catch up to heal 
the digestive issues that they've had. And remember, Dr. Morris is also talking about um, uh, when it comes to detoxing the body a lot of times, right? Once your body is fairly healed and fairly clean, and you'll know that by how your symptoms, your symptomology in your body, basically, then yeah, you can include certain other things that are a little bit more borderline. You just wouldn't have them every single day. You know what I mean? I hope that that makes sense for you. I hope that that makes sense for you. But um, I will see which which of the, I can't, I can't wait to listen to the one that you shared. Um, Karen says, I know we've discussed this so many times. Hey man, you can ask me a question a million times. I will answer it a million and one times. Uh, but I have to admit, I'm losing it. Do we have the peanut butter recipes up? The peanut butter recipe is not up, but let me give it to you right now. I want you guys to also remember that you don't have to have a hardcore static I got to follow that recipe exactly. Although that is helpful. The peanut butter cookie recipe is you take half a cup of peanut butter, or you can take a quarter cup of peanut butter, or you can take a whole cup of peanut butter. It adjusts all the way through. But I would suggest taking about half a cup of peanut butter, about a quarter of a cup of maple syrup, and you mix that together until it forms a nice paste. Get that really well incorporated. And then you add to that sprouted buckwheat groats that you have sprouted for a few days and then dehydrated. And then they get to be these crunchy, crispy little um, nuggets that are really, really yummy. Then you mix those together. You put enough uh, buckwheat uh, groats, the dehydrated sprouted groats, you, enough to get that to come together like a cookie dough. It's so easy. How much would that be? I don't know. It depends on how much you're using. It could be Mm, let's see, for a half a cup and a quarter of a cup of, of that, it could be a cup, it could be two cups, I don't know, I don't remember, just keep mixing it in and, you know, really mixing it in well, and uh, until it sticks together, that's it, that's it, so bust out your peanut butter, or your almond butter, or your cashew nut butter, or your tahini, or your favorite seed butter, put some sweetener in it. I use maple syrup because that's one of the things I'm allowing into my body. And then, um, and then throw in some sprouted dehydrated groats and Bob's your uncle. You're good to go. Super easy recipe. Bam. All right, Karen, it's super easy to make. So easy. So, so easy. Hey, Louise made it. Thanks for the reminder, Jen. Great to see you, beautiful burn. So great to see you too, my lovely Louise. No stress on yourself. Yes. Oh, no stress on myself. I'm trying. I'm trying because, you know, when I have it in mind what's coming and I'm promising it and I'm, I want to get it out to you guys as soon as possible, but then I also have to remember I can't rush greatness like that sometimes. You know what I mean? I want it to be really, really comprehensive and really good so that when I do it, it can be that seminal uh, recording, that, that iconic video that you can watch and you can send to your people and you can watch it again. You can share it with your family. Hey, we want to do this detox thing. Let's, this is why we're doing it. And this is what we can potentially eat you in instead of just saying, Hey, you want to eat raw with me? Most people can be like, heck no. What are you crazy? That's what I said when my sister came to me back in like May or something and said, we should try raw vegan next. We were always trying the next thing, or at least she was. And I was like, no, no thanks. Those raw vegans are like, I've been around them. It's like, no, 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 I don't think so. And then here I am, raw vegan. <laughs> Who knew? Yes, the acid class will be worth the wait. Big love to all. Thank you, Big Lou. We're receiving all of your beautiful love. Are cashews and pistachios alkaline? I'm not 100% sure about cash, uh, uh, pistachios, but cashews are, according to the sources that I have seen. Whenever you eat nuts of any kind, whether they are on the alkaline side or on the acid side of chemistry, understand that you're not going to be eating huge, vast quantities of it because it's concentrated food, right? I can't eat large quantities of, of, of concentrated nuts because I don't have a gallbladder. That's right. They took out the gallbladder when they took out my liver in 2017. Yay me. Um, so I have to be careful with the, with the amount of nuts I eat and, and the type of nuts I eat. And I know how it feels in my body if I've had too many. If I've had too many or they haven't been soaked 
and and it's not sprouted when you soak nuts. I can't remember conditioned or whatever it's called. Um, if you don't soak them beforehand, or at least for me, if I eat it, if I eat it and it bothers me, I know immediately. It feels like I've I've swallowed right here. It feels like I've swallowed a spiky rock. It feels like I've swallowed a porcupine if I'm not careful. So, um, so yeah. So, hey Louise. So I think <laughs> I love you so much, babe. Um, I. I really think it all depends on, on the individual person. I want this to be an experience where you guys are learning about how different food affects your body and keeping out the big triggers, the big, the big players when it comes to acid. And that is your meat, your dairy, your, your eggs, your, uh, your wheat products, your grains, oh God, the grains, it's the grains, the grains are going to be the killers, it's the grains, um, the sh refined sugar, refined carbohydrates, even flowers to a certain extent, they say the, the finer the grind of the flour, the more, you know, it's not good for you, I don't have flour all the time, I don't have flour all the time, oftentimes, like even those buckwheat Ivar crackers, sometimes I will just go for Go for the dips. You know, sometimes I'll have, oh, check out my stories from last night. You guys will see some really um, delicious stuff that I did with the eye bar crackers. But again, I'm going to have the buckwheat. I have, I've had it in my body. I, I don't see a problem with it. I have not experienced too much compromise in my, in my health. And I, I have markers that I look for that. I look at my weight. I look at how my body is feeling. I look at my bowel movements. I check my urine. I see how I am doing with that. It all depends again on your level of health and your level of uh, interstitial stagnation. What are the conditions that you are healing out of your body? How's your body feeling? Um, you know, but definitely keeping out those major players, keeping it as much as close as possible to raw. That's the other thing. That's a really other important thing to remember is that if you're having stuff like buckwheat and quinoa, having it sprouted and raw, as soon as you sprout something, you bring it into plant life. You take it from a dormant seed state into plant and active and activated state. So mm, we're eating plants. When we, when I have my sprouted buckwheat, raw sprouted buckwheat, um, cookies or buckwheat crackers or buckwheat dough, and I've sprouted the, the buckwheat, it is a plant now. It's not a complex carbohydrate in that regard. So, you know, wouldn't it be cool to have a list of alcohol? Yes, that's what I'm working on. That's one of the slides that I'm going to be working on today for the class. So, uh, wouldn't it be great to have a list of alkaline and acid foods, a good ballpark. I wonder, did Dr. Morse put a list together? Yes, he did. And I'm gonna, I'm going to be putting Dr. Morse's list on one of the slides today for you guys. No biggie at all. Just might be a handy one considering all the questions. Yep, I'm gonna put, I'm doing up a list. I'm making a list and I'm checking it twice, baby. I am I've got you covered. Thank you. I just got my 42 pounds of buckwheat groats. I'm set for a year, baby. That is amazing. 40, how much did you pay for 42 pounds of buckwheat groats? I'm interested. One pound of buckwheat groats at, on Amazon is 350, 350 Canadian. So that is a good, that is a good score that you got there, babe. So yeah, so um, uh, looking at what to eat, why to eat, what we're, why we eat what we are eating, what is the healthiest option for us to eat, to keep us healthy, to give us those cleaner our cleanest um, comfort food flavors textures experiences that we love i'm keeping it mostly raw in my house yeah right yeah super regarding the list yes i got you covered girl i got you covered it's already started where's my ipad i'm uh, i mean i could show you but you believe me it's already started i've got the list going and that is one of the things that's going to just take me a little time to organize and to get ready and I've got the um, why no beans and why no soy part of that lesson to do. So uh, I, I probably most likely will be talking about that list tomorrow. And you know what, if we do not, if I do not have the class, class ready to go 
today. What we will do in our noon class is we are going to do something fun. I'm not sure what yet, but if I don't do the class, we will be talking about a lot of these concepts anyhow. So it's like a warm up. You know what I'm saying? We'll be having a little warm up. If I don't do, if I don't get all the slides ready today in time for class today at noon, which is in like three hours, which I most likely won't have it done, um, then we'll talk about some of these concepts and then uh, kind of like a warm up. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be good. <sighs> I love you guys so much. So, so much. This was so much fun. Um, thank you so much for, you know, bearing with me and and um, with the whole late start to class and the, you know, set your, set your notifications, you guys, so that when I do come on uh, live, you're not waiting for me. And you can see that as soon as I come on, you can see as soon as I come on and you know that I'm here live with you guys. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I'm going to head out. You guys have a great day as well. Have a great day. Beautiful, beautiful Mandy. You have a good sleep all the way down in Australia. Thank you so much for popping in. It is always so good to have you in class. And all of you, I'm so grateful that you are here. Make sure to um, hit the thumbs up button. If you are watching this on YouTube or on Facebook, give me a like so that the algorithm knows to pump this out. Uh, thank you too. I'll be 30 minutes late to class. No worries. Whenever you're there, it's right on time, babe. I cannot wait to have you in class. And I think I, you sent me a, a voice message. I need to go check on that. I need to check that. I just saw it on my notifications. Ah, I love you so much. Mwah. I hope that you are all uh, going to have a beautiful day. And, you know, remember, I love you.